So our uh, task here, uh, our job was to discuss Alice. We heard about Alice a few months back over the United Way program and presentation. Alice, um, first I'd also like to uh, introduce my partners here. And we have Claire, Dunlap, um, Wally Myers, and Albert. Uh, I was called the club, but it's, it's, it's Albert Chair. <laughs> Uh, so, and Brian Walter from the Valdo Group, and he's not here, but we're used to that right now. Okay? Uh, so, um, Alice is defined as the asset limited, income constrained, and employed. That's the biggest key to that at all, is the employee. There are other classifications and categories um, that fall into the poverty, et cetera, but these are the actual working employed or income limited income constraint. So a uh, term for those who earn more than the federal poverty line, the less than they need to afford the essentials in the communities that they live in. It could be any, any of us. Um, and we could be Alice one day, not the next, and vice versa. Uh, it can go, you know, uh, ebbs and flows uh, of our life in, 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 in and out of Alice. Um, it could be you know, retail workers, small business owners, medical employees, you know, real estate agents, not-for-profit employees, trade workers, and you know, food service. Because any sector job does have Alice in there. Um, and the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic remain to be seen. Um, so we'll see when the next report is put out uh, by the United Way and see how COVID has affected uh, the numbers of Alice in the community. So I will hand it off to you. So one of the things that we did, I, I'm a numbers person. Uh, we looked at census data as the baseline for a lot of the things that we've been looking at. And the latest data that we have is 2018 data. So as you can see, there are about 30,000 households, about 70 uh, at the time, 77,000 uh, individual residents in Cuyupe County. Um, and you can really have a high median income, but yet at the same time, when you look at the federal poverty level, 12% uh, are below the federal poverty level, but approximately one third of the residents of Cuyuga County meet Alice. Uh, so one of the interesting things that was noted is that doing some analytics and some statistics and some correlation, the Alice threshold in Cayuga County is approximately 180, 185% of the poverty level, of the federal poverty level. So it's quite interesting when we um, try to separate the federal poverty level from those in Alice, but quite frankly, if you look at a lot of the services in the state, a lot of the services do hit those in Alice because you can be 150% of the federal poverty level to get some services or higher in some cases. Interestingly enough, when you compare Cayuga County to New York State, the numbers are very, very similar. And that, to be quite honest, was very staggering to us as a group. We had incredibly scary debates over uh, the course of this project. And the hardest thing was just coming to a realization that there was this big of a need in this state. Um, but with that, we're going to go over a few things that hopefully can help. Uh, be some resources to those in the office. So I'm going to pose two individuals. I'd like you folks to tell me what you might think, Alice, which one might be Alice Living. First is Lynn. She's a single mother with children that are 10, ages 10, age 6, and 3. Her partner is not currently in the picture. Her home is paid for. And she has a vehicle. She has no license. Lynn started college but could not complete it due to the fact that she has four children and finding childcare for four children has been quite a difficult task. Um, she's currently working a job where she makes $12.50 an hour. Hmm. Next slide. Bob, Bob has two daughters. And they live in a one and a half bedroom apartment. Bob works for the municipality somewhere around here. And he takes home about $320 a week. He has to manage child care and household chores like laundry without appliances. He struggles with electronic connectivity at home and has no vehicle. He's already taken advantage of Fidel's free insurance. That's Bob. Yeah. 
Is so, Brian? yeah, um, the general, so what, what, what's available? What help the resources do these, the Bob and, um, and, and have? So the general services available is, um, we have a two, Cuga County has a 211 hotline. And that hotline, um, you can either just dial 211 or you can go on the website. And, and they're going to direct you to the proper services that you may need. Um, the other outlet you might have, a uh, resource you might have is family services. And the family services are going to help you with child care, child safety, relationship assistance. And you also have a financial services available. And, you know, they'll help you with tax preparation and long-term planning and try to get you a solution out of the situation. Next slide, please. With that being said, with that being said, um, if somebody can move to the next slide. With that being said, um, still, there's, there's not enough resources available. Um, the basic uh, necessities are, are still not being met. Um, there's, not, there's no savings for emergencies or future planning and um, child care issues are, are, are prevalent and still a problem. So with all that being said, hopefully you have a better idea um, of who Alice can be. We really try to put a face on it to make it more relatable and people understand what struggles are really out there to, as we saw, 30% of the population in this county. Um, I'm sure a lot of us here, um, I know in our group, have either worked for a non-profit, volunteered, or have board service experience. So what we did was create collateral to try to um, alleviate some of the time and budgetary constraints on them um, to help spread this word about Alex um, and educate the community. So we have sample newsletters and an infographic that can be disseminated both virtual, um, visually as well as print. We also created uh, marketing personas, two of them you saw, Lynn and Bob. Um, and you can see we made a weighted system to help the Office of United Way know where to put their resources, both budgetary and um, personnel. So we have four here. I didn't think we'd have enough time to go over all of them, but I'm kind of double thinking this. <laughs> we went by okay. Jefferson and Michelle. Um, it was, Jefferson was a small business owner and Michelle was um, millennial. She just graduated college, hmm. has a job, a roommate who's not related to her. Um, so there's a wide spectrum of analysis we have already heard from my counterparts. Um, and what we did was put a face on it and help the United Way try to get this information out. We have a proposed strategy that will take about three hours a week, we estimate, for the office to complete with updating the newsletters, infographics. Um, two uh, additional ideas here, attending city council um, and county level meetings. Um, we want to make sure that we are consistently getting the message out there that is not just kicked down the road and forgotten about or brushed aside. We also thought of hosting an event when the big report comes out. It is a year behind in data. So I believe 2021 um, report will be coming out this year, but it will be for 2020. So we're interested to see those numbers um, and how they've changed over time. We also have come up for a plan for advocacy um, that I'm going to hand back over to Melor. Uh, so if, if you all remember the uh, first weekend when we started this, we had a presentation from uh, Karen uh, Mazier and another person from the United Way. And the biggest thing, one of the questions that I asked was, what can you do to help? And or, or also, mm -hmm. what is a root cause? Uh, I, I'm a big believer in let's find out what the root issue is and, and let's solve it. And their response multiple times was a prevalence of high cost of living, but a lack of high paying jobs. The United Way has a voice nationally, as well as in the state of New York. The United Way does a great job of fundraising. Last year, the United Way raised $787,000. This year, my company is the fundraising chair, so we're going to beat that number this year. <laughs> uh, but, you know, despite all of that, we, we felt that one thing was really missing, and that was the advocacy side of things, using the voice of the United Way to really bring, um, what, to shed light on what the root causes were, not just, hey, we need more resources. 
when we did our project, we found there are not enough resources in the county or the state to cover the need that there is. So we've got to work on the root cause of the problem. So the first part is for better paying jobs. Um, you guys have all heard me um, share my experiences. New York is a state where for businesses, it's less than a thousand cuts. It's not one usually uh, big issue. It's a lot of uh, smaller issues. And for a lot of businesses, one of those small cuts can be fatal. So what we are proposing is for the United Way to ask legislators and community leaders, have you tallied the impact of your decision on all stakeholders, whether it's business, whether it's community, whether it's those in Alice, whether it's those that they're serving, just simply ask the question and nothing else. Uh, the other thing is going along with that is being in the room. When we did our research specifically here in Cayuga County, uh, it was staggering that the, unless you worked for the state, for the federal government, or for a municipality, or were a teacher, or worked for Auburn Hospital outside of the, the home health side of things, you were likely an Alice in Cayuga County. That's significant, and that is that was incredible. So being in the room, just to say, hey guys, you know, have you have you considered what this is going to do to our community? Have you considered what this is going to do to the, to the tax base? Have you considered what this is going to do? Not advocate for a specific business, not advocate for even economic development, but just asking the question, have you considered what impact this is going to Just kidding, one more. <laughs> um, all right, so <clears throat> what are the incentives to get out of poverty and then out of the house? Um, you know, uh, that much of us have been very forthcoming um, throughout the process of you know, the past couple of months. And, you know, Rob's talked about his, his struggles with, you know, opening up the business during the pandemic. And while he's talked about his uh, experiences, um, so why, why, why keep going? Uh, why didn't Molly keep pushing and keep fighting? So it's, it's got to be that intrinsic, internal motiv motivation um, to, to I think our encouragement to you and to the community would be tough conversations. I guess what we mean by tough conversations is I posed the question in the beginning of this presentation of which person would be Alice. In fact, both. And the simple fact is you can work and you can go to school and you can get a job, but it still puts you in the bracket of being poor. And we hate that word, but it's the truth. If you have to pay student loans and kids and bills and such, it puts you in the same bracket as a person that's, you know, uh, I guess, for lack of a better term, living on public assistance. And that public assistance provides more support to a person than the person that's going to school and, and trying to better their life. So when a person is on public assistance and they see the person that's doing the other part, where's the incentive? Because at the end of the day, the person that's going to school, at the end of the day, is making the same amount of money, if not less, than the person that's living on the system making $12.50 an hour. Bring them. Um, to motivate people. And when we say motivate people, we mean motivate the folks that have the power to make the changes in the community to help those folks that are in poverty and Dallas. Um, mindset, simple, self-explanatory, and promote growth within our community. So we have a lot of businesses in our community that, you know, are, are not a lot of businesses, that's wrong, but we have some businesses in our community that are doing quite well um, although the pay to the people below them, say nonprofits and such, or beer places or restaurants, the people below them, the owners, aren't making a, a, a decent livable wage. So to promote the, the growth in that community of people that are working to promote the growth of the community of, say, uh, uh, tourism and being able to do stuff in the community and support the community in all assets of life. So. I hope that makes sense. <laughs>
tough conversations, motivation, mindset, growth are on a larger scale, but also in our many lively meetings and debates um, for this project, as well as in our classrooms. It also comes down to an individual level and support systems and networks and knowing the right people. And it might be somebody that you just see every day um, in the same situation. So maybe you feel comfortable enough after a time's past to have a conversation with them to see how they're doing, to see what they could need help with. And you want to motivate them if they have that internal um, intrinsic thing that they want to do better, they want to better, they just don't know how. So you need motivation and that mindset encourage that mindset to keep growth. Um, so as well, not as well, um, so as well we said, it, it's on a larger level, but it's an individual one too. And that's what we want to encourage you to do to go out to the community. Um, do you have any questions? Yeah. So in, in regards to the research and everything, we kind of collected in this project, we talk about living wage a lot and everything jobs. If you were to estimate for two counties specifically, what would you say is a living wage that is an ideal wage that someone should receive so that you have to be financially stable and be able to cover the base? It depends on the size of the family, but if it's one person, I mean, I can live on four dollars an hour. So we, we didn't look at that specifically. Um, and you can probably guess where my brain goes, much <laughs> like that. I don't think the answer is living wage necessarily, because we could say it's fifteen dollars an hour, we could say it's twenty-two dollars an hour. Um, but if there isn't so for example, there are a lot of um, a lot of 25 year olds that come back home that don't have jobs. There's a lot of people under the age of 30 in Cayman County who are not employed. So if you have one person who's making $40,000 a year, you know, roughly $20 an hour, um, and they're supporting a the household of four, that's not enough. But if you have two people working that make the same amount of money, all of a sudden that's pretty significant. So I, I don't subscribe personally to the living wage philosophy because the minute you make a higher wage, then there's increases in taxes, there's increases in um, property taxes, there's increases in the tax rate, there's lower availability of services, there's more regulation. So it's a spiral that quite frankly, if you study Washington State, for example, Washington State went to the $15 an hour Everything. So guess what? Now the push is twenty-two dollars an hour is the right number. So they don't ever stop if you go for a living wage. That's not addressing the root cause. That was one of the things that we came across and kind of struggled with. Quite frankly, was that there's such a broad spectrum of people and situations that it isn't a one size fits all. Um, and that's why I kind of tried to bring that to you know, and our kind of individual. Because yes, that's where it starts. Um, you need the government assistance, you need state and federal assistance, but it starts much smaller. Insurance will always be expensive. Right? right? So if you got <laughs> a family of two or three and you're making 60 grand a year as the provider of the family, you don't really qualify for anything but you know the insurance through the agency that you work for, and that really puts you in a different you know, you're thinking seven hundred and forty dollars a month, eight hundred dollars a month for family insurance, medical dental and vision. That takes a lot out of the overall pay and puts you in a different bracket. So like Homer said to say, you know, what would be the livable wage? That's a I mean, I could live in a one bedroom apartment at fifteen bucks an hour, but I don't have that opportunity. So yeah. okay. you have up here um a weighted system for marketing. So is your marketing geared towards informing the community that Alice exists or is your marketing geared towards those who are Alice to get um, necessary help? Uh, it was twofold. Okay. Um, so we had the infographics and the newsletter could, could be distributed to community centers for churches and churches that didn't have the funds to do that. Um, that is more ground level that will reach the people who need the resources um, as well as could be tweaked and modified to go to the higher level to be that consistent voice 
for change and for support. Um, so it's twofold. Sure. I got another question. <laughs> and you guys talked about getting, being in the room. What rooms are you hoping that this message gets into? Oh. Okay. United Way of Elementary is county, state, and national. So they have a platform to be able to be at all of those levels um, and have a unified voice um, and direction. So it, it, again, it starts at the county and city level. But nationwide platform is, is something that you can't just <laughs> snap into. They've got it, they built it, and sure. uh, we're encouraging them to use it. Yeah, part Fantastic. of the at the local level, providing services. For right. example, going to the community groups, going to the churches, going to the meetings. If you go up a level, let's just talk here for a minute. Yeah. You can go to the Auburn City Council meetings, the talk to the data board, talk to the community county legislature. Um, the state level has a pretty large voice in all of it. Sure. But I'm not sure that this part of advocacy is being talked about. It's mostly, hey, can we get a grant? Right. You know, can you help us with this grant? Well, we need a grant for this, or we need a grant for that. Well, that's good. Yeah. There are a lot of other things that will solve needs. You know, if going back to your question, Manny, if you have one person working in a household of four, because it's, it's shocking the number of people in Cayuga County who are able to work, but they don't have jobs. And a household is being supported by one person because a 25 year old came back from school because they, they're not working. If that 25 year old could make a decent job to bring in money in that household, then that would get that whole family out of Alice more so than a grant to fix a porch or, or you know, sure. You know, subsidized house. So yeah, it's it's at every level, yeah. um, but it's specific to what level you're at. Yeah, I think it's a great point that they can use their power and um, influence to really address some of these root causes. And again, we're not advocating they advocate for specific jobs or industries. We just sure. want them to ask the question. Hey, we understand that this is a, pri a legislative priority. Have you taken consideration as to the impact on all community stakeholders what this will do? Yeah. Just simply asking that question. That's great. Are there any more questions from in the chat or in our room in the room? You see any? No? Hey, you guys did awesome.